What is going on, Hot Warriors? It's your boy Edward V, and today we're going to talk about the best tricks that you can use while walking for fat loss. I know a lot of people like to use walking, and walking is a good tool, especially if it's difficult for you to run or bike or even get your hands on certain equipments to do certain cardio. So walking is always the sleeper cardio that you can do to get results. But what are the best tricks for fat loss? Let me go ahead and break it down in this video. Stay tuned. All right, guys, quickly before this video starts, I do want to thank the sponsor of this video, Built Bar, literally my favorite protein bar. This is hands down the best tasting protein bar that you will ever eat. Just a quick pro tip, the cookies and cream flavor is absolutely 100% my favorite. Usually protein bars have a very chalky taste to it and it tends to be really, really rough, but these have like a fudge-like uh, texture to them while having an amazing taste attached to it. If you've seen any of my videos or any of my content, you understand how much I care about protein, that specific macronutrient helps you burn fat as it has a very high thermic effect, but it does so much more in terms of helping you build muscle and a lot of other health benefits that connect to your amino acids via protein intake. If you wanna lose weight, there's just no better macronutrient than protein. And if you want a protein bar that help you facilitate the intake of that macronutrient, there's no better protein bar and Built Bar. You can click the link down in the description box below and don't forget to enter Fledge 10 so that you can get 10% off your entire order. Now let's go ahead and jump right into the video. All right guys, so oddly enough, before I start talking about the things you should do when walking, I'm gonna talk about one thing that a lot of people think you should do, but it's actually better not to do in the long run or even in the short term actually, is wearing heavy clothing simply because you think you're going to sweat more. Remember, the majority of your fat does not come out of your pores. Fat actually is removed from your body the majority of the time via your breath, via breathing out. The more that you're breathing, uh, the more of that fat is being removed. It also comes out when you're urinating. That's where you will see fat release the body. So sweating out more, you may lose weight on the scale because you're dropping a lot of water weight, but also you can be heavily fatigued because of this discomfort, the body is actually more designed to try to breathe and get some air in. And sweating is also an application of your body trying to cool down. So if you, if you have so much material on because you are trying to sweat out the fat, it's probably not going to help you. And even if you burn a little bit more calories because your body's dealing with the discomfort of the heat, you could literally probably run or walk for a few more minutes to get that negligible difference that comes from wearing heavy clothing without the added fatigue that can make you actually quit earlier than you normally would. So don't try to use heavy clothing to sweat out the fat is just not going to help you. Now let's go ahead and talk about the first thing that you should do, the first trick that you should do to help you with your fat loss when walking. Walk for at least a 30 minute consecutive time. This is simply because it enhances the EPOC effect, which is the post-exercise energy uh, expenditure. And studies have shown that you can get this up to 36 hours of continuous energy expenditure if you do cardio for at least a good amount, like 30 minutes. For example, that time frame was used in multiple studies. And it shows that the EPOC effect lasts for 36 hours. So you definitely want to get a time slot of 30 minutes as opposed to just trying to walk throughout the day only and using that as your total uh, walking uh, steps or whatever it is. You can get a specific amount of steps uh, in totality, that's fine, when you accumulate all of your steps for the day, but you do want to find a slot where you could walk for 30 minutes. Put something comfortable on, put some sneakers on, and walk for 30 minutes it will take you a long way in terms of full energy expenditure over the course of multiple days weeks and even months the next thing that i want to say is create those incidental walking periods now i was just talking about picking an actual exercise time slot of 30 minutes but you do also want to create incidental time slots of walking that are just opportunistic. For example, if you were to uh, reach an elevator and the location of where you're going is about four flights up, 
decide to take the stairs instead of the elevator. If you are parking your car, try to park further instead of closer to the door, which the natural inclination and even people are normally fighting for those closer parking spots and parking lots when you're trying to go into some type of location. Why not get there a little bit earlier if you're not rushing? Park as far as you can where there's more parking spots probably available anyways and just walk, creating more of an opportunity to walk and burn more calories and get more steps in. You also have to walk back to your car at one point, which also creates more opportunity to walk since you parked your car further from the doorway. Find incidental moments where you can walk. If there's moments where you can just walk around the house, then go ahead and walk around the house. If you're gardening, whatever you need to do, just try to find little moments that you can create opportunities to walk. And the final trick that I will say that you can do to help you uh, actually burn fat during using walking is thwarting your weight loss resistance that comes from walking or being successful in weight loss when walking by carrying weights. Now you can either carry you know, some small weights in your hand or you can carry some type of weighted vest, whatever it is, but try to thwart that resistance that is going away little by little. Because if you continue to walk and you continue to reduce your weight, your body is working under less stress. But you wanna keep giving your body that stress that will allow you to burn more calories. So for example, if you walk and you've lost 10 pounds, it wouldn't kill you to have five pound weights on each hand so your body still has to carry 10 pounds when you're walking or a 10 pound vest or a vest that you can put weights in it as you continue to lose weight because one of the reasons why our metabolism starts to slow down is because we are literally carrying less weight and with less weight your body needs to expend less energy to move that body around so to counteract this you want to go ahead and add the weights that you've been losing obviously if you've lost one or two pounds that's fine four pounds, whatever. But if you hit like maybe five or 10 pounds of weight loss, go ahead and grab 10 pounds and put it on your body when you do your 30 minute walk so that you can add that weight back and your body has to account for that resistance. Don't let your body get lazy when it comes to your weight. Be strategic, be smart, add that weight back on and work off of that energy expenditure instead of the energy expenditure of your new weight from your successful weight loss. It'll definitely go a long way to continuing hitting that fat loss goal while circumventing plateaus that a lot of people hit because they are not aware of these kind of repercussions for losing weight. Hopefully this video has helped you guys. And of course, as always, I wanna thank my patrons from my Patreon. I'm gonna go ahead and put their names right up here. And as always, guys, I'll see you on Wednesday for another FAQ. Peace!